Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight we're going to be reading out of Psalm 100, verse 4. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. We're going to read the whole psalm because it is only five verses. His steadfast love endures forever. The whole verse says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Verse 1, a psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Great psalm. Our Lord would have all his people rich in high and happy thoughts concerning his blessed person. Jesus is not content that his brethren should think meanly of him. It is his pleasure that his espoused ones should be delighted with his beauty. We are not to regard him as a bare necessary, like to bread and water, but as a luxurious delicacy, as a rare and ravishing delight. To this end, he has revealed himself as the pearl of great price, in its peerless beauty, as the bundle of myrrh, in its refreshing fragrance, as the rose of Sharon, in its lasting perfume, as the lily in its spotless purity, or the lily of the valley. Remember, we've talked about this over the last few months. During this year, there are several times we've come across this. And I told you guys, he is the rose of Sharon. He is the lily of the valley. As a help to high thoughts of Christ, Remember the estimation that Christ is, had, in beyond the skies. There, where things are measured by the right standard. Let me read that again so you can understand what he's talking about. As a help to high thoughts of Christ, remember the estimation that Christ is, had, in beyond the skies. Where things are measured by the right standard. Think how God esteems the only begotten, his unspeakable gift to us. Think about how God esteems Jesus. Should we even begin to come close to that would be a miracle. Consider what the angels think of him as they count it their highest honor to veil their faces at his feet. Consider what the blood washed think of him. That's us. As day without night they sing his well-deserved praises. High thoughts of Christ will enable us to act consistently with, the relations, with our relations towards him. Did you know that you are not worthy to even let Christ see your face when you stand before him? You ever wonder why so many people fall to the ground with their face to the ground? That's why. Christ, I'm not even worthy for you to see my face. I'm not even worthy for you to look upon me. This is ultimate humility. Even the angels cover their face. But what an amazing thing we have in him, in that he doesn't consider us that way. He considers us friends. The scriptures say that clearly. In his words. High thoughts of Christ will enable us to act consistently with our relations towards him. The more loftily we see Christ enthroned, and the more lowly we are when bowing before the foot of the throne, the more truly shall we be prepared to act our part towards him. Our Lord Jesus desires us to think well of him, that we may submit cheerfully to his authority. High thoughts of him increase our love. Love and esteem go together. Therefore, believer, think much of your master's excellencies. Study him in his primeval glory, before he took upon himself your nature. Therefore, believer, think much of your master's excellencies. Study him in his primeval glory. That was when he was here 2,000 years ago, before he took, or even before that, before he took upon himself your nature. Who was he before he lived on this earth as one of us? Read the Old Testament. He's all throughout it. And what was even more amazing is he was even before that. See, when God knew us from the beginning, before the foundations of the world, Jesus was there and he knew us too. Even then, he was in the highest glory possible. How amazing that when he gave himself for us, he attained an even greater glory. 
Think of the mighty love which drew him from his throne to die upon the cross. Admire him as he conquers all the powers of hell. See him risen, crowned, glorified. Bow before him as the wonderful, the counselor, the mighty God, for only thus will your love to him be what it should. Even then, we still fall short because we're human beings. But you know what? We have something much different than the rest of the world has. We have the Holy Spirit within us, and the Holy Spirit will take the love we show and translate it into the spiritual love that he bestows upon us. Because the only way we can love him even closely to the way he loves us, if he sheds his love abroad in our hearts, then we can love him like he loves us. Even now, we still struggle to maintain any level of higher love towards him. Look at the world. <laughs> Look at what it's doing. I mean, th th even the Lord says, if I didn't shorten the days, even the very elect would be deceived. It's no wonder he strengthens us and causes us, as we read his word, to find him and see him in a greater light, see him in a much more specific light, and, and learn to grasp a hold of the wonderful blessing that is Jesus Christ as we learn more about his character and take on those traits and express that in our individual lives as we live as human beings. We're being made to be like him. We're being prepared for heaven because the Bible says on the day of redemption, he finishes the work he started in us. That means he's doing that work right now. So let us revel in our Lord, revel in his excellency, revel in his charity, revel in his expressions of love and peace, gratitude, because we can express those things back towards God, towards Christ himself, and towards our fellow man. And what an expression that is, because the Bible says to those who do these things, to those who live by faith and love unconditionally, there is no law concerning them because they are a law unto themselves. Amazing. The Bible has so much more to teach us. Let us keep reading and learn more about our Lord and what he desires, about what he wants. And let's let the Holy Spirit do his work. Let's let Jesus Christ do his work. And so we start to change and become more like him. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. If you do that, people are going to start calling you names. You're a zealot. You're crazy. You're a fanatic. You're far right. And your response should be, thank you for noticing. Thank you for noticing. What a blessing that you see it. That tells me I'm doing what I should be doing. It tells me that the Lord is making changes in me, that I am walking according to his will. When they call us those kinds of names, that's a great thing. And it shows that they notice the truth. They notice that we're being changed by him and made to be more like him. Let's let him do his work and glorify him in it. Because it is a beautiful thing to be saved by the Lord and to be changed by him. And when somebody who is looking for truth, somebody who is looking for answers, somebody who is looking, comes across one of us and sees the Lord reflected in our eyes and, realize, and in our behaviors and in our life and realizes, this is the person I've been looking for. Tell me about Jesus Christ. And we tell them, we give them the gospel and they run to him for salvation. Praise God that all men have this ability, that all men have this right given to them, this right to accept this free gift. And without us even doing anything other than being a Christian, a true born-again believer, we light the path for them to come find him as his emissaries. Be more like Jesus. But the first thing you have to do is you have to go learn more about him. Only then can you fully understand how to be like him. And the Holy Spirit will help you on every single step of the way. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.